This is an overview of the bootstrapping applet you'll be using to analyze your experimental data in your P211 lab section. Now first, the applet can be found under your OnCourse lab section webpage, under Resources, Statistical Software, and Downloading the Within and Between Subjects Resampling.jar applet. Now I've already downloaded it, so I'm going to go ahead and open it up. What you'll first notice is these two columns here, dataset A and dataset B. Now what you'll be doing is copying and pasting the reaction time averages for your experimental conditions. So let's go ahead and call this the experimental column and your control conditions. All right. So all you'll be doing is pasting your reaction times for the experimental conditions in this column and the reaction times for your control condition in this column after you've gathered your data. Now I don't have any data on hand so I'm going to go ahead click on options and click on generate statistically different data sets. This is for demonstration purposes only. Now imagine that these are reaction times for your experimental condition and your control condition. So for example this could be your word stroop task, it could be your famous faces task, spatial stroop task, whatever you have, and this is your control condition in that same task. Now in this applet you need to make sure that each row is a unique individual. So if this is subject 1's reaction time for the experimental condition, and this is subject 1's reaction time for the control condition, make sure they're in the same row. So subject 2 will be all in this row, subject 3 will be all in the third row, and so on. After you've entered your data, go ahead and click, click on Calculate Difference. So what we're interested in doing with bootstrapping is, given a small sample, we want to generalize to a larger population. So if we were to use each person in our sample as a surrogate for anybody else in the general population, we can go ahead and randomly sample them with replacement to generate different data sets and calculate the difference between the experimental and control conditions once again. Now after we've done that, we calculate the mean of the differences, plot it in this distribution of sampled means right here, and we can do that tens of thousands of times. Now the rationale behind this assumption is that if we randomly sample, say, eight subjects from the general population, each one of those people, each one of those individuals, can be used as a surrogate for any other random selection from the population. So when we generate another data set, and say we sample subject two uh, three or four times, that's okay because we assume that it can be a surrogate or a stand-in for any other random subject pulled from the population. So after we've calculated the difference, go ahead and click on plot your data. Make sure that research mode and within subjects design are checked. All right. So this is 10,000 iterations and as you can see it takes less than a second to plot it. Now what you should focus on here is this shaded box. This represents where 95% of all your sampled means fell. Okay? This blue line here represents zero. In other words, there is no difference between your experimental and your control conditions. But as you can see, the majority of all these sampled means fall to the left of zero and 95% of them are outside of zero. If 95% of your sampled means are outside of zero, we will call this a statistically significant result for the purposes of our P211 lab section. And what you'll be doing in your paper is reporting this 95% confidence interval. If you want to save this image, just right click in this pane of the distribution of sampled means and click on Save As. All right, so to show this for more pedagogical purposes, I'm going to click on demo mode and I'm going to click on step. So what's been shown here is the very first step of the bootstrapping. Now what happens is we have sampled some subjects more than once. In this example, there are 20 entries. Each subject was exposed to the experimental condition and then the control condition, and we calculated the difference. 
Now, sometimes these differences show up more than once. This is the count on the y-axis here. So sometimes we sample the same difference three times. Sometimes we sample it two times. Sometimes we sample it four times. And then we take the mean of all these differences. And that's what is represented by this blue line right here. And when I click step again, this blue line is going to be plotted down here on this histogram. So I click on step, and you see that this value is roughly negative 2.6, and it's plotted a small line here at negative 2.6. So again, we resample, we bootstrap. Some subjects are sampled more than once. That's why we get some of these differences more than one time on this y-axis here. Now again, the mean of all these differences is right around 2.5. So this next sample is going to be plotted down here at about negative 2.5 when I click on step again. Now I keep doing this. Another sample mean, it's around negative 2.2. It should appear down here. Click on step. And as we keep doing it, we collect more and more sample means. Eventually you can just hit run and you'll see it going in fast motion. Okay. If you want to speed up the animation, you can set animation rate through demo settings to fast, and then hit run. So what's going on very quickly is each of these blue lines up here is being plotted down here. And it's generating a distribution of all these resampled means. Now again, what you should focus on is this gray box here representing 95% of all your resampled means and whether this blue line representing zero or no difference between your experimental and control conditions falls inside of this gray box or outside of the gray box. If it's inside the gray box, then we'll say that our observed difference is not significantly different from zero. So in other words, there does not seem to be a statistically significant difference between our experimental and control conditions. On the other hand, if this blue line representing zero falls outside of this gray box, representing 95% of our sampled means, then we go ahead and we say that our difference between the experimental and control conditions is statistically significant from zero. So this will go on for about 10,000 times, but it looks like it's going to, again, put a distribution centered roughly on around negative two. Go ahead, click stop. So, to recap, for your own data, you'll be copying and pasting your reaction times for your experimental condition in one of the columns, and the reaction times for your control condition in the other column. Make sure that each row represents a single, unique subject. After you've done that, click on Research Mode, make sure Within Subjects Design is checked, and click on Plot Your Data. Once you've done that, Report these results right here for your paper and go ahead and save this as a picture to insert into your paper. I hope this has been helpful. If you have any questions, you can email me or post a question on OnCourse.